In this video, we're going to look at the vendor's additional information tab. Again, we go to accounts payable, vendors, and the vendor you can go to add. You could review the existing vendor. Let's do it this way. Add, if we view the vendor tab, information tab gives you the address and all the main information. On the additional information tab, this is where you would assign the type. As I spoke to you when we did the overview of the vendor dimension, in this case we have equipment supplier, other subcontractor supplier. This allows you to group the vendor for reporting and filtering on the report. If you have a vendor that is actually the child of another vendor, say you have an Amex card and you have multiple Amex cards, but you want them all to roll up under one vendor, but you also want to track the individual cards, you would have Amex as your parent, and these would roll up under, and each individual vendor card would roll up underneath that. GL group is used more, mostly for items, which we'll get to when we get into construct, uh, construction and projects. Uh, tax ID, if it has a tax ID. If it's 1099 eligible, you would check this button, and then you would give it uh, a 1099 name. And when you go to save it, It'll pop up the 1099 forms where you select the uh, 1099 type, normally miscellaneous or NEC, and the box that it belongs to. You can also add attachment like a W-9 or some other vendor information that you may need here. And it stays with the vendor and can be viewed by anyone who views it. If you have a default expense account for the vendor, like maybe cost of goods, or cost of sales labor or cost of goods subcontract, you can put it here so whenever you fill out a transaction that uses this vendor, it'll auto populate the GL account when you do a bill. You can also set a credit limit. You can put a vendor on hold if, say, you have some dispute with the bill and you don't want the vendor to be used, or maybe you just don't want to use the vendor right now. So you put it on hold so that it's not available to be used for posting. A relatively new feature is a do not pay button. It means you, if this is checked on the vendor, you can't pay the bill from the vendor. This is useful, especially if you have a dispute with the vendor on some particular bill item. You can make it so that your AP staff doesn't accidentally go ahead and pay them when you don't want them to be paid. Uh, you can put in comments. Default currency is useful if you have multi-currency. It does not have to be filled out if you're mono currency. Your default retainage percentage used for any of your construction vendors that you need to have retainage on. Tax calculation, you can mark it if it's taxable or non-taxable. Contact tax group, which we'll get more into when we start talking about taxes. And email template options. This allows you to create a specific email format or layout that you would use for that vendor in your various transaction definitions and purchasing and or order entry. Okay. Well, you'd use it in purchasing for vendors on customers that'd be an order entry. And that covers the additional information tab. Don't forget, little question mark and help and support help on this page. Are you best friends? We don't understand something. The first place you, you should go before you ask anything else.